Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian, I'm a structural engineer, and this is a type of tensegrity structure. It looks somewhat magical, except it's very much real, and it works in a way for balancing forces that are in tension and compression. So before I get into exactly how this works, here's a quick sped up video of my younger daughter assembling it. Hi everybody, I am Paul's second daughter, and <laughs> today I am going to be making this Lego set. Put this, let me do that. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Is it magic or is it physics? It's physics. Yeah, physics. So using physics, we can understand that tension and compression have to balance each other out. It's why this structure looks a little odd because we're used to seeing columns one on top of another. And here we have a kind of a column but then it's going back up this tension and down this other compressive column. And obviously with some of the curves in this, there's some bending as well. But one of the key parts that is important to keep in your mind is that word I used, balance. In many ways, what this is doing is maintaining balance of the structure. It might be easier if I tip it this way to see that the weight of this piece which wants to fall, is being held in tension through these tensile cable elements, and they're not allowed to rotate by this other shorter piece here. And in fact, it is a little less stable if I tip it over and oh, there you go, right? It's actually quite a sensitive structure to balance. In terms of tensegrity structures that you're probably more familiar with, this toy that many of you may either have seen or have at home, is a very good example of a pure tensegrity structure. It's a very self-contained, self-stable structure that fills up space, that fills up volume. All of the compressive elements, the larger rods, are, are separated from each other, whereas the tensile elements, these slight, thin, elastic pieces, are continuously zigzagging through the space, and they are what are keeping each of these separated compressive elements in equilibrium with the whole system. Now, what might be something that's useful for this? Uh, well, some people have postulated and tried to use these in terms of forms of structures in space. After all, they are essentially self-stable even when not on the ground. You know, this is something that's quite impressive because they're so self-contained and balanced. Um, also, in terms of being able to move and adapt some of these pieces, if you could make the tensile elements shorter and longer, you could cause this structure to be mobile in some way. But one of the areas that I found this to be most interesting is in the work of Kenneth Snelson, uh, a sculptor. Kenneth Snelson designed a sculpture called Early X Piece in the 1940s. It's a very clear expression of balanced forces and material occupying space. He developed these ideas with Buckminster Fuller. Buckminster Fuller is the person who put together the name tensegrity, combining tensional with integrity. It's a little bit catchier, and Bucky Fuller went on to publicize that idea quite a bit. Kenneth Snelson developed his ideas from his early sculpture into a range of multiple other sculptures, many of which you can see here. They're 
quite stunning in their variety based on a fundamental theme. That fundamental theme, actually, he patented it. Uh, his patent was called Continuous Tension, Discontinuous Compression. You can see, although true, quite a mouthful. And you can see why tensegrity as a word became a little catchier and easier to remember. Uh, for myself as a structural engineer, when I was younger in my teen years, interested in the ideas of structure, I saw pictures of the Skylon, which was part of the Festival of Britain in 1951. This was uh, engineered by Felix Samueli, and it was truly an astounding sculpture, structure, object in space to look at. It looked like it wasn't able to work, and yet it clearly did. It's an incredibly good expression of form, balance. You can even see the cigar shape to the column, the main part of the column itself being exactly the kind that is the optimized form for a column. I've covered that in one of my other videos. And my favorite Kenneth Snelson sculpture is actually Needle Tower 2. It goes up about 90 feet. It's a beautiful expression of uh, tapering form. In many ways, if you think about comparing it to, let's say, the Eiffel Tower, both of these are objects that rise up from the ground, reach upward, their purpose is to exist in space, and I appreciate the Eiffel Tower. You can go on it, you can walk on it, and it has an antenna at the top. But the key part is that they're dealing, from a structural point of view, with the forces of gravity and wind. And yet they do so in two very different ways. In many ways, Needle Tower 2, I think, speaks to many of the ideas of sort of math and growth and progressive form. You can see a lot of these patterns in nature, in fact, when you have a very clear geometry idea that you can repeat and use beneficially. So, tensegrity structures. Nothing is hidden from view. Every way in which it works is there to be seen. There's just two types of elements, compression and tension. It's all balancing. And yet, even though you can see it's all balancing, even though you can see it's all working, they really are quite wonderful. They, they make a level of amazement when you look at these existing in space. I think in, in some way, for, for me at least, these are both honest and yet full of a surprising type of beauty. Oh my gosh. Mm. Yeah, you got it. And voila, it's back to each other. It's yeah. back to where it was before. You superstar. High five. That was a loud clap. <laughs>